Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello everybody, my name is Alex Payne and it is a great pleasure to be back for the final one of our House of Rugby Best of Episodes brought to you by Joe, together as always with our very good friends from Guinness. It's a chance to look back at some of the more memorable, some of the more enjoyable stories across the course of our first series. And this week's show is essentially a Joe Marler special. I think it's fair to say he came in for a couple of rather extraordinary visits which lurched from the heartfelt to the sublime and very much on to the utterly ridiculous. His spirit of misadventure very much to the fore and over the course of the show you're going to hear plenty of swearing. Apologies for that. Some trolling of Israel Folau. Fewer apologies for that. And why he retired from England. Or has he? Hashtag awkward. We will wait and see on that front. But it was very much start as you mean to go on. I'm giving you nothing. OK. <laughs> it's not the point of you being on here. Oh, right. You can't, you can't you just want? go on giving you nothing. Oh, I'll give you oh, what's something. What's happened? How's the caravan? Oh, there Caravan's we go. And we're, up and, and we're up and running. <laughs> you know, you've really got this is, this is not just um, voice. Where are the people? Well, they could they're, be anywhere. They're on the other side of the camera. We're the, we're the biggest sport. We were the biggest What's sport. What's most disappointing is that this isn't a real house. I thought this was at yours. We're moving in. We're moving into a really? real house quite soon. You know, <laughs> we're talking about the camera. So, because if you want to know about your life, we, we've, I follow you on Instagram to know about the trials and tribulations of a the caravan, but b the leaf blower. Mm. Why have you always got a leaf blower in your hand? Keep the misses on her toes. <laughs> no. Well. Do you, do you, Chase around the house, yeah. getting into watch stuff. Watches, yeah. yeah, she's fucking not happy with it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. She's Every not day. happy with it, honestly, <laughs> mate. And the kids, they half like it, but like then they get scared, especially like when I carry on and they can't breathe. They're like. <laughs> My favourite was, Daddy! and I'm like, yeah, it's he good. does it. Every, follow you, us. You follow it on on, on his Instagram. I do. I, I've, do I've just you? joined. Yeah, I don't. Talk. I don't clock in regularly, but I will look for the. What was the last picture. time he clocked in? 1985. Like he, that's all he does every day. He's literally blow. That's oh, not true. I want to say he's it's blowing into people's faces every day, but that's probably inappropriate. It's not true. I don't do it every day. I I pick and choose. You can't give it too much, otherwise it gets boring. Yeah. If you do too much all the time, <laughs> it's the same. It's relentless. It's the same shit all the time, and you're like. Fuck, can, he's everywhere. I mean, the leaf blower's everywhere. He's on fucking loose women. He's on this shit. You, it's can, too much. You've got to hold it back Can a bit. you mute people on Instagram so you don't see their feed, but they don't know that you're not following them anymore? I haven't looked into that, no. You, you like bad you do people. Don't, you, like, you don't like trolls, so you nah, block them. I block you? everyone. So can you do don't that? Don't on, block these people. Just unfollow me if you're upset. Okay. You don't have to follow me. I, I, literally, I, I, can, I can lose one follower. I'm not going to lose sleep with your... I, I like following well, then, well, I then feel... Don't insinuate the oh, I was, I was, I It was a genuine stories. question. Mm. Mm. Um, Last week didn't start as we were wanting. You're already in, you're on a sticky wicket. Why? A cricket Ooh. one, because he knows that. Sticky yeah. wicket, eh? <laughs> And that's not a second. Are you genuinely irritated last week? Or were we just playing with the camera? I've... Playing with the camera? Okay, good, perfect. I've, I've what just have I ever it. been angry with you on anything? Uh, what did I just... Bloody hell, what was that? You that literally that. walked in. You walked into the poshest posh fest ever. I love last it. week? No, no, you and me, I, he's, he couldn't be any more... I'm very surprised you let me... But it's nice to get a little contrast. It, he, his sometimes. highlight is microwave mussels from his local pub. How do you know about that? Because <laughs> you I told, told you. <laughs> <laughs> what is microwave mussels? What the fuck do you think microwave mussels are? They take a plate of sh- my- mussels that are supposed to be steamed. You normally have them in a white wine and garlic sauce. No, 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 right? It's a jus, darling. A jus. <laughs> white wine and garlic And at his pub, they put them in a microwave. That's like a death it's trap. It's not my happen. pub. It's a pub. All he right. says his pub I would is... Never, I would never microwave Moule Marinier. <laughs> don't, don't hit him. Don't, don't hit him. He doesn't understand what you just said to him. You think, you th- it's quite interesting looking at the wide angle of this. Put the wide angle back up. Yeah. What are we it's at? a little bit like Darwin's theory of evolution, isn't it? You go from one to the, to the more there. developed version to the fully developed version, don't you? Oh, you sound it's a fucking well, voice, haven't it's, you? It's like Darwinism if he was on a sort of a really crash diet. Like unit, medium unit, skinny, fully developed, skinny schoolboy, prototype, bloke from Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, good reference. Well, for the record, I would still never microwave Moule Marinier, and I hope most of you are in full agreement with that. Fortunately, though, it wasn't just me that took the brunt of Joe's anger. He also reserved a decent chunk of it for both Israel Folau and his England teammate Billy Vunapola, mainly by trolling them on social media for their controversial takes on homosexuality. So what exactly was it that Joe was doing? You know, just a bit of a light-hearted spin on Lolling. a situation that I was like, come on. Just... Can you just explain for our non-Joe Marler subscribers what you did? Um, I 
tweeted a picture to Israel Falau yeah. of two men kissing and just put a love heart next to it. Did Israel reply? No. Still waiting for that. Mind you, we weren't. We're not particularly close. I don't think we've ever really, you know. <laughs> I don't think he's ever replied anyway. Yeah. Anything. You know, so. Um, and to Billy. And then Bill. You know, it's just another little. You know, come on, little dig in the ribs. Just fucking get. Just leave it. Just love. Did he reply? No, no, no. reply. No. Next time you see him, is it big, big bear hugs? Well, Two that, big bears that, hugging. That would be on him if he took offence. Will you open your arms to the hug? But probably not. No. <laughs> oh. Really? Well, he plays for sat word. But give me the context. You are walking down Oxford Street with Daisy after a nice day shopping, and there's Billy coming out of Cafe Nero with a cup of coffee. <laughs> this is so partridge with a hot cup of coffee, and you bump into each other. And at that point, you can either walk past, hug, raise an eyebrow, or doesn't it depends? Fight. Did he when he bumped into me? Did he spill the coffee on me? No, no spillage. All right, Bill. All right, Marla. You okay? So this days it. Oh, hi days. Hi Bill. Yeah. Hi. Cool. Lovely. What are you doing? Just in Oxford Street, getting a coffee from Cafe Nero. Mm. I was like, yeah, I know. Alex just told me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, I hope that's. I hope that's how it plays out. Yeah. Oh man. Did you know that the charity Stonewall got in touch with us today to say thank you very much indeed for the support from James and Nick. Um, it's worth updating, actually, that Flau is um, about to go and face a code of conduct hearing on May the 4th following his homophobic social media posts. He wanted that, though, didn't he? I think he wants that, yeah. What did you, where do you stand on it all? What's your...? Look, I, I just think he's... Whether it's right or wrong, and I don't believe in what Israel Flau put out on social media, but that is his belief. Yeah. I think, you know, religion is a tough thing to get right. And if he believes in that, that's fine. But I don't think he should share it over a platform where he is a professional sports person. Whether he, d we always talk about um, whether you're supposed to be someone who's looked up to. You don't ever get into rugby to be idolised or to be a role model. You get into for your own reasons because you enjoy the game or whatever. But he, he, you know, he's allowed to believe whatever he wants to believe. That is. That is the way of the world. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can have an opinion on everything, and social media makes that opinion, but he shouldn't really be sharing it on social media. I don't agree with him. There's be millions of people who don't, but there will be millions of people who do agree with him. That's a very wise and sort of nuanced opinion. But which it sort of puts you in the middle ground, which at the moment, in life in general, is, is not yeah, hugely look, populated. You I agree with what Joe, Joe said and what... And what Haas said last week is everyone should be allowed to be whoever the fuck they want to be. And if someone came up to me and told me I'm going to go to hell because I like to go out and get pissed every once in a while, I'll go, OK, that's, your, be be that's your beliefs. It's quite it's a traffic jam on the way to hell if that's the case. It's not going to affect me in any, in any way. Yeah. No, but, the, I agree with you. The issue comes where what you believe in directly affects so, someone else or affects their life because you're putting it on them or trying to influence them or harass them about what they believe in rather than just, I believe in this, I believe homosexuals are going to go to hell. Right, that's what you believe. But don't go out and then in a position of yeah. power, you know, to all his fans and all that lot, who a lot will be Christian or believe in faiths that think the same, but also a huge amount don't think that. And he's a rugby player. He signed up to be a rugby player. So you follow those code, code of conduct and you also have your own beliefs behind closed doors. That, you know, but that's not me saying you should keep your religion and your beliefs behind closed doors. They're not welcome in the world. Hatred isn't welcome in the world. Yeah. Like if you start putting it on people that don't believe in what you believe as well, then that's wrong, then that's the issue. I thought, I thought what Will Genya said about it was quite interesting in the fact that <clears throat> he said in all our time, until 12 months ago, it's never affected the locker room. Really? So, I didn't see this. So he said it's never affected the locker room, it's never actually been an issue. Because I don't believe he, uh, that Israel Flower has never been in the company of gay people or... And then... Well, I, he was on the front page of... Uh, <laughs> 
gay times in Australia well, with Adam that, Ashley Cooper well, in terms that, of promoting. So I can't see how he's ever gone up to someone and gone, "You're going to hell." Yeah. So why? But then Will Genya has now said. He also said in that he said, "Well, as now, because of what happened a year ago, it has affected the change rooms because he's put himself." before that of the team. Yeah. Whereas he could have done it a year ago and made a mistake. He is now actively chosen after being told what you've done isn't really what we want to put out there, whether you believe it or not. Um, don't do it again. And he's then chosen to do what he believes or yeah. what he believes in more than put the team first in terms of what's best for the team, which is him being in in Japan. It'd be fascinating to be a fly on the wall when he meets up with um, David Pocock, who said he wouldn't marry his girlfriend until um, oh, yeah. same-sex marriages was legalised in Australia. Is it, so is it, it legalised? It is now legalised, oh, it is. yeah. I was going to say, it's just a great get-out clause, that, isn't it? <laughs> 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 <It's> like, perhaps. <laughs> but even, I think he's a bit more of a campaigner. No, 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 than that. Past, love, that, that, was actually, uh, that was a joke for yeah, anyone who thought um, I was taking that seriously. <laughs> but see, that's, see, that's, that's, the, that's the thing, though. After everything you say, you, have you now to, have to go, yeah. no, well, that's not, you know, it's yeah. all about context and that lot. Like, fuck me. <laughs> it's tiring, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's not. It's well worth finding out. I wonder what his wife first, well, his, his fiance thought at the time. Yeah. Just get out. Billy Man of the Match on Saturday um, said afterwards he didn't mean to hurt anybody, but he believes in what he believes in. Is it parked now, do you think? Or the fact that he hasn't unliked the post and the fact that. The noise continues. No, I, I mean, as, in some ways, we're guilty of that as well. I mean, it sh it, 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 has he has he has he admitted what you're asking for, which is I should have kept it to but, myself, but I believe what I believe. But, is that acceptable, or is there got to be more? But as Nick said last week, and Nick, you know, has spoke a lot. Whereas Nick came, <laughs> yeah, Nick was. Uh, I didn't really have an issue with Billy because mm. you know he he wasn't preaching well yeah. he was almost forced into making a statement because people kept calling him saying yeah and excusing him but i'm sort of putting context into it and he was just trying but but and but the, the great thing about billy in terms of that is he said look i've done those some of those yeah. things on that list so i'm always trying to change so he's just trying to explain i just i just don't think he articulated just, it very well it just didn't need and to he get just, well, he just didn't he shouldn't have bothered but i know but you, felt, that, that, you feel yeah. passionate about what you believe in and you feel like you have to defend. But again, you go back to, well, I'm a rugby player. Yeah. People know me because I'm a rugby player, not because of... Me sharing my beliefs and yeah. my discussion you know I mean? about That's, it. Mm. So, and but it, we're it goes asking back to more this and more of players. I mean, I, you know, I, he didn't get it right, but I, I like players who offer something more yeah. than just That's because you're a being journalist rugby and you want something to report But I on. think the game needs that. Well, I, you know, it goes back to it, when we it had... Does. As long as it does. It doesn't yeah, overspill it, to go in. But the comment you made um, on the show with Vernon about... I, I, as a journalist, I don't want... I'm not looking for stories, but if you want to be paid to play rugby union, you need to have characters and you need to have stories and you need to have passion points. If no one tells those stories and shows those stories and builds the occasion, then it's like the old... You'll be able to correct but, me on this. But the, Does a tree make a noise if it falls in the wood when there's no one there to hear it, Connie? Kind of? If no one cares about rugby, I agree with you in your shit analogies. Yeah, but you don't need players coming out uh, and saying, yeah, I'm, "I'm going down." I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I can feel myself getting into sticky mug. I'm not. Yeah. This has got nothing to do. You're with saying Billy, you want characters in the game, but at the same time, that there is a, a lot of uh, media outlets that push characters out of the game because they want to build them up, knock them down, build them up, knock them down. And for a, a player and everyone goes, where are they all now supporting Gaza? Or where are they all, all the play, all the people who've fallen off a cliff because of, they are those, they had those vulnerabilities in terms of whether it be addiction or something else. You're quite happy to roll, roll the roller coaster when it sells papers. I'm saying papers more than probably Sky, Sky Rugby Club. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've done many ills in my life, but, but Gaza is yeah, not a responsibility. Yeah, but th th that is the sort of, Thing and that's why players now get more sterile in terms of they hate they don't want to talk to the media because sometimes you know the the one quip that you do say and Alex even said oh yeah we keep things out of the papers <laughs> yeah maybe but then we still put stuff that will sell you papers right and again it goes back to headlines and and all that jazz but I just think you don't need to be outletting on social media anything about. Anything other than 
than rugby really you don't need to be getting into those discussions because you're never in a well that's a win bu- situation that, that, that's is bullshit it? it's rugby or or meat or meat <laughs> marla's meat marla's meat is the billy thing done it's about to be chocolate as well mate i'll let you have some thank you what, what's this wizard's chocolate mm-hmm. does it go well you can get what do you mean chocolate? wizard's chocolate it's magic you've got marla's meat and tyndall's wand no, I need it's to very, leave. It's a very Can different you, show. Can you get that taxi earlier, please? Um, is the Billy thing done? Oh, I'm, I'm done. As far as you're not... concerned? I'm, I'm yeah. done, yeah. Move on. Well, Joe, with Mike Tyndall there, underlining why the game needs enormous characters just like him. When he engages, he is truly fascinating. When he's going half speed, well, let's just say you get out what you put in. James and Joe are going to attempt this week's perfect pour, courtesy of a Hollywood actor's 15. Yeah, I fucking did it. Yeah. Have you? I did that. I did eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's just worse. Not doing it. And then it says it actually says on the script, "God help us all." So they've preempted. I don't. Uh, where you we're know, with go. the greatest respect, I'd rather not be involved in that last sentence. God help us all. I Why? don't want to offend anyone, but okay. I also. God don't. help us all, Bar Joe. Correct. Okay. Don't need his help. Um, you got the lucky Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should laugh at my own jokes, but it was too good. Well, in all seriousness, Joe is a truly engaging character. Extremely good company, uh, especially when you hone down on some of the game's big topics. After Falau, uh, let's just see what exactly he had to say about why he retired from England and whether he had any regrets on calling it a day. No. You make your choices, you live by them, don't you? If Eddie Jones comes to you pre World Cup and says, I need you. What would you say? Like what for? To come to <laughs> the, the world. driveway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what I need do you a, need me for? I need another prop to take with me to Japan. What? Fuck! I ha- am I gonna have to? I'm literally gonna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's what he does. I'm, it's what he we're does. eleven minutes in. And I'm exhausted. It's what he does. It's what he does. It's his specialty. Eddie Jones says, "Joe, I need you to come with me as part of my 33-man World Cup squad to take on the rest of the world at Rugby World Cup 2019. Very... It's taking place in Japan. Will you come with me?" <laughs> Fucked him off now. Yeah, yeah, he's gone now. <laughs> you're fucking gone now. aggressive, gone, mate. You're you'll a... be out with dueling and with a fence, <laughs> fencing in a minute. P- pistols. Not, not the fence. Right, right. Fucking yeah. hell! He's gone for pistols. You normally go for um, swords. You really are pistols. In a very unlikely event that Eddie comes right. to me and goes, "I need you for the World Cup. We need you to come and hold a ped." Yeah. Um, and do Mecco's training. Yeah. Um, you, I don't know. You never say never, mate. Good. Have you ever? Have you spoken to him? Very since you unlikely. Reti- have you spoken to him since you retired? Yes. About not in, pers- not in person. On text. On text. And message. he has he asked you whether you'd reconsider? No. <laughs> has he it asked was you more whether you like? Thank fuck for that, mate. <laughs> Come on. Because I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh. job you got in there first, mate. Well done. Um, nice messages. Yeah, no, we've got, we got a good rapport, but it's often not rugby related. Right. What's it um, to do with? You know, some bits. <laughs> hey. L- like, <laughs> hey. Bits, is hey. it? So many bits. bits. So like, many like bits. what? When, when I say bits, yeah. it means that I'm not going to tell you what I mean. Right. I'm just going to say bits as he's, if you know what I mean. He's implying that he's a bit of a, you know, loose character, but. He's absolutely not. He's a real family man. He, d- he lives in fuck off. Arse end of nowhere. He spends his entire life in a car. I live in fuck ass, apparently. Yeah. You just it, said. You know, it, it's Heathfield. It, it doesn't sound like fuck it, ass to me. He lives in the arse end of nowhere. It takes him four hours to get anywhere. If you ask him where Joe Marler is, he's normally in the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he is. True. It's in the car between things. Did you retire from international rugby because you found it tough being away or your family found it tough you being away? Or a little bit of both? No, I think it was very much uh, one way. And I found it tough being away. Did you? Because when it came around to like campaign time, and we're watching the game on the on the TV, or my son's looking at it, he's like, "Where's Daddy? Why is he not there?" And also, you know, a bit like, "Why aren't you away at the moment, Daddy?" And I'm like, "What do you mean by that?" He's like, "Well, can you go away?" Oh. Oh, what do you mean? By, yeah, fuck off. Oh, fast starter. Yeah. Yeah. But did you? <clears throat> I want to know this because we haven't, we didn't talk about this. Obviously, I texted you as soon as I, I heard about oh, it. I appreciate your message. Thank you. I, um, but I, all the time I've known you, I don't think I've ever seen you struggle. Like, I didn't think you ever struggled. You always gave 100% commitment. You always done it your style. So, always that. I would sum this up as always appearing not to care, but 
always going hard oh, or required, I, always I, giving a hundred percent. I never, I never saw like when you're in camp. I never thought, oh, you're struggling. No, when when you're there, you're there, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, you know what I mean. You buy into it, but um, it was never. I, I mate, we had some great times. Yeah, I really enjoyed my time and some of the memories I made there. But your priorities change in life. Things happen to you in life, and you reshuffle what means the most to you and what what you need to prioritise. And for me, right now in my life, is prioritising my family and, and helping them as much as I can. I've got another one on the way in Have June. You? Yeah, oh, look, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another one coming in June. Little boy. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like you've got kids. Like any time... You, we spoke beforehand. Yeah. You spend a lot of time away from them. You miss those moments. And it's like, well, do it, do it a couple more years. Do you know what I mean? Do it a couple more years and then you can set yourself up a little bit more. Then you can spend time. But then you already miss out on those two or three years of trying to teach him to ride a bike. Can they not I ride a bike? I still didn't teach him to ride a bike. Right. Or like, um, you, no, the, re- the re- <laughs> only reason I ask is just because it's one of those things. Like I was there your very first day you came into England camp with that unbelievable haircut with the jolly hog. I remember sitting no, it down. it wasn't that one. It was bright red mohawk, it wasn't was it? A, stars and stripes. Stars and stripes. I remember sitting down at the table and looking at it across. Bold start. And going, who is who this bloke? Is and it was a red mohawk and stars cut into the side of his head. And <laughs> Doz has just told me on, well, by the coffee machine that he'd had a fight with him in the first game. And I was like, who is this bloke? He's a complete lunatic. He looked like an absolute monster. Um, and Cheers. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had dyed red mohawk and stars, like what well, you know. It's a strong statement. It is quite absolute a... monsters. A bit strong, isn't it? That's the sort of thing you'd say about Gaddafi. No, yes. whoa, depends what your reference of or Mugabe. <clears throat> depends what your frame of reference is. Well, they're they're my references. Well, I meant Gaddafi, mo- mo- Mugabe. I meant monsters. You've in, called I me mean mo- monster monsters. Unit. You said monster. No, no, I meant monster in unit, not like monster in you know Pol Pot is murdering a whole load of people. I didn't mean that. I <laughs> meant Pol Pot. <clears throat> one of the big. He's um from um. <sighs> is it not? Here so, we go. Who is Pol Pot? He's uh. Go on, help me out. I've just made some. No, he's from Colombia. No, not Colombia. He was on fucking X Factor, you dickhead. <laughs> no, History. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he has killed a yes, lot of people. No, where Pol Pot? I can't think where it is. Where is Pol Pot from? Um, no, Cambodia. That's Honestly, the one. It's Cambodia. Doesn't matter. It's Cambodia. Doesn't killed matter. millions of people. Genocide. Does it keep it light? Yeah, yeah Cambodia. Move right. on. Wait, what what I'm your asking, point? So my point was, I've seen it all the way, all the way through, and I think of all your rugby, the, the stuff you're playing now or playing in that, that period of time was some of your best. And was it really hard to go actually? I'm still getting better and I'm still doing what I do. And I know you, you joke about doing Mako's training, but you're different players, but still right up there. Was it really hard to give that up? Um, yeah, it was hard. It wasn't like a, an easy decision. I'd thought about doing it pre-South Africa tour um, when we went into camp before. So obviously we didn't make the playoffs last year. Close. Going well this year. Joint 11th. Um, but... Um, Went into the bar bars camp, getting rid of that, and I was just like, literally like that. I was, I don't, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I'm, I'm packing it in. And the missus, and I went home and I told Daisy this. I said, I can't do it. I'm done now, because we'd had these fights quite a lot. Of whenever camp time would come up, <clears throat> at home would she'd sense it. It'd go a little bit like. And she'd always convinced me otherwise. She'd be, so, yeah, so you didn't like want that, you, you to enjoy do it. it. But you didn't want to do it? No. She didn't want you to do it? N- no. No, right. so it, it would always, she'd always convince me. She'd no, you'll be fine. You'll love it when you get there. Yeah. You always do. We'll be fine. It's fine. Yeah. I, can, I can handle it. Thanks. Yeah. Don't oh, really? Me. Go I thought, it. from what I'd read, I thought it was almost like she had said to you, you need to do it. No, she's still, even... So the South Africa tour, I said, I'm going. She said, no, look, you can't. And I went, what do you mean? That's a bit of a different tone. She thought, well, I've already booked this holiday with <laughs> my friends <laughs> and the kids. I went, yeah. She said, but you're it's during invited. your time that you're away. So it would mean that you... I love her. Well, you she can come amazing, with if yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, I don't really want you to come with. So yeah. go and do the tour. Yeah. See how you feel at the end of it. And then make your decision there. So I was like, right, Did so you've you know? stopped me doing it so you can still go on holiday. Sounds what a lovely, I made, what an amazing lady, I love that. And did even when I did make the decision, she went, 
I'm really I don't intrigued. Think you're doing I, just, the, I don't think you're doing the right thing. I, I, when I read about it, because I hadn't talked to you about it, I remember I, I, I sent you a message and you wrote back going, yeah, interesting times, mate, I'll come back to you. So I didn't, like, nause you up because obviously, you know, when your mates appear in the rugby world, you kind of, you know, pass each other from time to time. But you don't get, get off, obviously get to spend a lot of time with each other. I actually came in and because I read about friends and family wanted to say, I said to, to Chloe, you know, at some point, would you ever say to me? Because that's what I thought your wife had said to you. And she was what, like, no. Choose. Oh, well, some do, but some it's do. It's rugby or it's me. Yeah, well, some do. Some do. Some put, I put pressure. And that's what I was thinking. That's what I thought. And I was thinking to myself going, I yeah, Hang would. on. If that, if some, you shouldn't be with that person. Yes, yeah, so I'm know. not saying you are. Yeah, yeah, Chloe, no, no. Chloe. <laughs> you made it very Where clear to Chloe that it's I'm the so... Haskell trainer. She's off. She's off. This is a brand no, love, Chloe, and it only no. works <laughs> with the rugby. No, no. <laughs> no, Chloe would never, never say that. But I, I'd, I'd stupidly... Uh, I just interpreted that's what had happened. And you've gone, basically, listen, I'm struggling with the kids or whatever. I wasn't putting words into one's mouth. I thought that's what happened. But I would then thought one day when I was like 40, I would have woken up one day and been really resentful. But it's actually really interesting to you, you, that she was saying, actually, you go and do it. Uh, I'm going to 100% support you. We don't need it. We're fine. We can. You're going to have a great time. And you were the one saying, actually, no. I didn't, I didn't know it was that way. It's it really eye-opening. I didn't... Did you know? So that third test was your <laughs> last game. What? <laughs> yeah. Did you know then? Because you had a hell of a game in your uh, final uh, in your final test I'd, today. I'd pre- I had, I, yeah, my mind had been mad. I loved that tour. I know we lost two one or whatever, and you know it was a bit of a spiral from continued from the Six Nations, but it was a brilliant tour. Um, <clears throat> the group that was there did a lot of like growing, a lot of youngsters coming through and. And we had a great time off the pitch as well, but um, I'd kind of made my mind up then. And uh, to actually see out the final game and finish it off with 80 minutes. Because you, you like, looked yeah, emotional and shattered. Oh, I, I mean, none done. of us knew at the end. Yeah, but... I, was, I was done there. I remember. Were you emotional? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. I, um, it was about 50, yeah, I don't know, shall I say? Yes. Yes. Can I say this story? Yeah, yeah. Of course you can. Yeah, sure. Um, why not? He's going to get in trouble now. Yeah. Well, don't go too mad. If no, you, I'm not going to yeah. mad. Yeah. No. And uh, it was about 50 or 60 minutes in the last test and Wisey, Scott Wisemantle came on and he was like, mate, the boss says you've got five more minutes. And I went, Wisey, you can tell him get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and Wisey, he was like, uh... No, I'm not going to do that, Joe. And then he ran off with the waters. So he carried on. About another 10 minutes went. And he came back on and said, boss is right, last effort, mate, last couple of minutes. I said, why is he? Honestly, you've got the mic on now. Tell the boss, get fucked. I'm staying on, mate. We're seeing this fucking job out. And why is like, okay, so I'm going to have to... You're serious, aren't you? And he was like, I don't know whether he actually did or not, but he must have, because... He walked off, did that, bro. Walked off, and I was like, "Fine." I was shattered. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Finish to the game. Done. Made my decision. We're in the after match function bit, and I'm sat there on one of the stools with a couple of the boys. Got a glass of red, and someone taps me on the shoulder, and it was Eddie. And he turned around, he was like, "Fucking love that." And I was like, "What?" He's like, "Fucking love that." <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? He's like, you know. <laughs> you know, and I was like, yeah, well, I wasn't sure, mate, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it could go both ways. But because of my mindset of where I was at, you then don't really think of repercussions of, hang on, mate, I've just told the boss to get here, fucked. Yeah. I didn't mean to get fucked. Bear in mind that I've been burnt with stuff yeah, I say not, more than what you've so, said, uh, although actually you've been <laughs> burnt. Go, no, go, it's go more go what it. you've done. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a that is a brilliant story, but I want to ask you the same question relative to the Lions, 2017, and that Wellington game. Was that uh, <laughs> was that a scenario where you didn't come? Well, I can't remember what they were called. The seven who geography six geography six was that the, the, the you guys wouldn't come off for the, for those members of the geography six? Or was that complete fiction? What? So In that the, 31 all game against yeah, Wellington. Yeah, 31 all game. Oh, None we of all stayed on, didn't we? You, yeah, all you stayed, stayed on. Minutes. You told someone to fuck off then as and well. And there was a you? story that, that you guys weren't prepared to let the Geography 6 earn a cap for the Lions because they hadn't earned a cap for the Lions. Not quite the way you've said it. What's the, Wig, what's the truth? Roundtree was on the side, Graham Roundtree was on the side doing the subs or whatever. Yeah. And it was a tight game, wasn't yeah. it? It was quite tight and there was about 10 minutes to go. Um, and pause in play because it was like, lads, I'm fucking blowing here. We need to like... Put your foot on the ball, chill. Coley's blowing. 
<laughs> fat two fat detectives. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and I looked over and I saw Wig um, telling the boys to warm up and get ready. And I was like, Wig, it's not fucking happening, mate. It's not fucking... Because Wig was my Quinn's coach. So, yeah, we had a good relationship. Um, I said, it's not fucking happening, mate. We're going to fucking see this job off and, and win it. <laughs> we didn't. We we drew 31 all, and we could have actually done with them coming on as fresh legs, maybe winning it, but... <laughs> You know, you win some, you lose you win some. some you, lose. you had a blinder in that game. Or you did you play that game? Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah you, <laughs> you had a blinder in that game. Did you play that game? Were you in that game? <laughs> Shit, you were fantastic. Oh, well, you, uh, what I was going to say, you I told remember me you to having say a, blinder a blinder for the Lions, and I couldn't remember if it was that yeah, game or the no, game I did, I, I, Yeah, I went right in those games, actually. It was all right. Well, I think watch this space is the best way forward on this one. We shall see in the fullness of time. But something else that we might see over the next few years is Hask and Joe on reality TV. It's no surprise, of course, if you know anything of James, it is perhaps more of a shock where Joe is concerned. Do you want to just fill the nice people in about what you've been doing? Last week it was Bella Magazine. This week, I understand you've been on something called ITV's Small Fortune. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is there nothing you will not do? No. Where would, you draw the line? where would you draw the line? If, if Dancing on Ice or Celebrity Show Jumping on I, Channel 5 I'm came to you. I'm waiting for it. I'm sorry said, that you're meant to answer this question, but I am waiting for... I'm a Celebrity <laughs> is one of my favourite shows. Honestly, it is one of my favourite shows. Would you it's go on it? It's a show on Would ITV on? and it's got right. loads of... What do you do? Would you go on it? <laughs> you think he has no, no, ITV? No, no, I'm waiting for this man. Are you going to go on it? it'll be gold. How many times have they asked you? <sighs> it's a possibility. Yes. We haven't asked twice already. What? <laughs> Would you be that excited? Make it happen. Make it happen. I just don't think... I'd worry you'd get done for bullying. I don't think myself Why? live cameras is a good idea. Do you not think? I just think it's a bit... Yeah, I, well, I don't I mean, know. That's, why, that's why you have to pre-record this. Yeah, I think, I think you know, I, I, there's no point asking me on any of those dancing shows because I can't... Why? I'm just terrible at dancing. I'm not really built for dancing. SAS Who Dares Wins? Yeah, I could do that, I think. Pardon? SAS Who Dares Wins, that programme. What do you mean, yes, I can do that? I could probably do SAS Who Dares Wins. I can hear Sai going zero chance. <laughs> He's such a rat. We can hear you. Your horrible voice travels, you bastard. Of you course I can do it. Bastard. What would you do? What? Bargain hunt. Rogue traders. Badly Rogue pat traders. Badly patio driveways and stuff like that. <laughs> can you hear Sai? <laughs> what would you do? With what? What's the question? Oh, Jesus what fucking would I do Christ. What reality TV thing would you do? trying to spark a conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, idea yeah, of the show yeah. is that we but chat, you've got it's to amicable. ask the question. <laughs> Your question you is had, so general. What would you do? If you had what to do you go, mean? If you had to go on a celebrity television programme, Joe, yeah. comma, which one would it be? I First, would question mark. really love... Thank you. I would love Big Brother. Yeah. I think you would... The problem with it being there is that... With you, and we'll probably come on to that, is that you never know what you're going to get in the morning. You know, like, like sometimes you wake up and I'll talk, say we were in England camp and I'll see you by the buffet and I'll, and I'll be like, Joe, well, what do you want to call a spread of food? What, a trough or something? I what? definitely don't want to call it a buffet. <laughs> Fine. Well, the well, buffet. And um, I go up to Joe and I go, Joe, how are you? Fuck off, Hask. <laughs> right? That, that'll be one morning. Next, mate, I'm like, Joe, how are you? And you like, tap me on the shoulder and go, Good mate, how are you? I'm like, right, fine. You just never know what you're going to get. So in Big Brother, one day you could wake up and you yeah, be charming. Yeah, but James, have you never thought that that's possibly a defensive mechanism because I've been hurt so many times in my life that I then don't want to get people too close to me? So I'm then make them on edge <laughs> rather than vice versa. Credit where credit's due. He is good. He is very, he is I mean? very good. It's 100 miles an hour. It's 0 miles an oh, hour. No. It's but the best break, is... accelerate, accelerate, <laughs> <Yeah>. break. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's time for a break soon on this, the best of House of Rugby. And speaking of breaks, here are Marla and Tins on what rugby players do for their summer vacations. Relax by the pool or dance until dawn in Ibiza. You must love a family holiday. Ibiza? Yeah. I ain't taking kids to Ibiza. No, but, I mean, does everybody head to the same Yeah, the, yeah you, 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 you do fall in the same categories, don't you? you, don't, you know, single, Vegas? Single shaggers yeah. on low sort of money. They're going to Shagaloof, Malia... <laughs> Might even, you know, stretch to a bit of Ibiza, but they're not getting into the Ocean Club with yeah. all the like, VIP. They're, yeah. they're actually the people. They're picking up the, the drag ends. They're like, oh, yeah, let me... No, fuck, no, you're, so that's the lower The cocktail yeah. grabbing. Yeah. And then uh, you've got the big dogs, singles, the old Vegas boys doing yeah. all that lot. And then the family guys who just go get a villa and, you know, read books. Like you? Like me. Do you not... Where, where do you get a villa and read your books? Portugal. Do you? Yeah. Sardinia. 
Oh, that's nice, actually. Where's that? Sicily? No. Italy? S- Sardinia? Yeah. Yeah, where they make sardines. Where is it? <laughs> where is it? Santorini you should go to. Yeah, Santorini. That's lovely. Nice. That's a little classic one for you and yeah, for you and Yeah, uh, I'd like Desi. Santorini, wouldn't I? Yeah. Why? Why are you doing that? Don't know. <laughs> it was, it was uh, another oh, oh and God. Uh, what do you get? A month? Six weeks. Five weeks enforced now. Five weeks enforced. Right. Two, three weeks completely do you off. Stay, do you stay fit during it? Two yeah. weeks. Oh, I love a bit of gym, don't I? You I do. do a bit of gym, but I won't do no running. Fuck no. off, no. Running, that shouldn't be allowed. Right. <laughs> in the game itself or just in training itself? Just all the time. Just in all, all the time. Yeah. Um, so you will you do That's weights during the season? So off-season. much better than it used to be. What, off-season? Yeah. What was your right. off-season like? I've never had five weeks in my life. What did you have? A week. A shut week? Up. If you were still Fuck playing off. for England. You had a week off. Oh, oh no. you'd have to go on tour, wouldn't you? Yeah. And then you'd come back in and... And literally they'd say, oh, you can have two weeks, but we'll frown upon it if you have more than a week. Well, then the RPA have done relatively well in fighting mm. that battle. So you are watching and listening to House of Rugby brought to you by Joe together with our very good friends at Guinness. Now, don't forget you can watch and download some of our other shows, including Swanee's Cricket Show with Graham Swan and TKO with Carl Frampton, of course. And this week, the Boxing Boys have been speaking to Tommy Coyle, recently beaten in New York about his future. 23 years I've been fighting. Oh, I've done every single day for 23 years, go to the gym and have a fight and train and that. Um, fuck. But you can't do it for another 23 years, Tom, and that's the thing. At some point it has to come to an end. It's hard, it's mm. real hard. The last year and a half of my career has been the best. Mm. All my, like, my new mates and that. I had some great, great fights. have been all over the world and it's hard to think that. That's it. Well, that was Tommy Coyle in a very emotional interview about his future on TKO this week. This, however, is House of Rugby with me, Alex Payne, and part four of our summer best of series focusing on the man, the myth, the legend that is Mr Joe Marler. Two of the biggest things that we talked about actually during his time with us were Samson Lee and first his fight on the pitch with the Hask. We'll get into the nuts and bolts in just a moment, but here is James on what was said when the fight was all over. I said, I'm really sorry, I lost my head. And he went, you did? And I went, yeah. But and ever- you said, got you good laugh. He said, I got you. One I nil. said, one nil. One nil. <laughs> That's what he says every time he does shit. It's one nil, so thank you. Irritating. Well played. But I brought this, I brought this with me. What for? Well, in case you rip it off later. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Does it look good? It's the it last does. time I wore it. Is that really, did you chuck it away afterwards? Yeah, I did, yeah, because he pulled it off the prick. Did you break it? Well, he probably did. <laughs> I can't. I, I'm looking at myself in the reflection. It's not on straight. It's actually very odd seeing people wearing those in well, everyday life. Honestly, what was going through your mind in that? Because it was very <laughs> right. brilliant. So, <laughs> so just like it's so good. Right, we, I'll we, explain we, so. We are, are, we are, I know, I know, I know. And go, ah, laugh, I know. Let's <laughs> get <laughs> I can't believe you lost it. I know, so I know. You're a pro, picture. mate. You're a fucking pro. I never do lose it, do I? You never lose it. You're fucking. You're always the one getting other boys. Yeah. You're you're on it. Yeah. You know, with bits, gags, and all that. <laughs> lot. Yeah. Does that make it the ultimate triumph as a result? I t- am extremely proud. This is one of the proudest moments that I have been involved in on, on a rugby on a rugby field. field. I, I I would say that there was there was this has been building for a couple of years. And I want to give the the, the the context behind it. When I was captain, uh, oh. I've never forgiven you for this because this really <laughs> fucked me off. When I was captain, right of um, Wasp before I got fired for unceremoniously. Um, Why were you fired? I don't know. No oh, I, I vaguely do, actually. It was to do with a boat trip that I had nothing to fucking do with. But anyway. Oh, hang on. You were fired as in fired as captain or fired from the club? Oh, I was eventually fired from the club, but I was, I was, I was, didn't get oh, captain. Oh, you got sacked off as captain because of a boat trip. Why am I putting this right? It's literally going further around Who my head. Who are you looking at when <laughs> you're doing I'm looking at myself that. and it's not working. Just for right. our, our listeners, yeah. Hask is wearing the red scrum cap that Joe ripped look, off. He look, and then, the ear holes are gone where he grabbed it. And then squirted break. water up. You were a little yellow carded, weren't you? Yeah, right. So you know the ca- red would have been the ultimate. Let me. Cover if you've got him sent off, I'll sorry. explain. So Wasps played Harlequins. I was captain. JP Doyle was referee. This was right. when I was also. This captain is when Marla was Queens. also captain, right? <laughs> One Crazy season. days. One season. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, half a season. Joe has a bit of a laissez-faire attitude to most life. things, right? Life. life. So we're out in the field, and every time I went to speak to JP Doyle. <laughs> Joe would come out of nowhere, going, well, Hash, you know, you haven't done, you know, and just get in, in my face. And then he would be abusing JP. 
So much so that when I went to speak to JP, he went, no, I'm not speaking to you. Right? And the whole game, Joe was speaking to him and he wouldn't let me talk to him about anything. He kept sending me away like a naughty schoolboy. And under the posts, uh, someone had given a penalty away and Joe came over and come on, Hask, all your teammates are cheating, mate. You've got to sort it out. And I was honestly like this. Fuck. And I didn't talk to him. I just pretended he wasn't there. But what I didn't get was... Obviously, I didn't get captaincy. Um, <laughs> but what I didn't get was that you obviously approach captaincy differently. Yeah. I thought I could have a chat with you and yeah. I'd get some chat back. That's what, you know, I just talked to you as a bloke. and we'd... Bad enough. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Don't ever say that again. Why are you staying in character of Captain Hask? Yeah. Why? Why didn't you just be Hask for a minute? That's what I couldn't. I was uh, like, Hask, let's talk. Because I'm you were like, no, I, I can't be seen yeah, but... to laugh or thinking in front of my soldiers and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Run! Yeah. That was essentially. I, I love how you were getting captaincy tips from <laughs> Joe Marlon. I know. Uh, it's bizarre, isn't it? What, what has the world come to? It was more because. You know, I'm a serious <laughs> operator. Smooth operator. No, but anyway, you no, know that. a serious operator. No, you know that. You know that. Like, when it come, that's the one thing that people always get really confused <laughs> about. Sorry. Did you just say I'm a, I'm a serious operator? Hmm. <laughs> just look at your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, scrum cap. I'm, I'm operator. a serious operator. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Norwich Radio. No, leave it on, leave it on, leave it on. It completes the look. Right, so basically, <laughs> what have we come to? I'm really sorry to involve you in this fucking shambles. Um, no, I've learned some new words. No, so essentially... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! What has happened to this show? <laughs> no, just, I, just so you know, no, you, the, you won that game. Yes, I know, I know. We had, uh, no, seven, we had seven attempts at goal in front of the post, yeah? No, no, you beat us. No. When? That time, it was one of... You had a comeback. You came back... Every time we beat us, you beat us by two points. Yeah, it was I fucking a did. Game. Yeah. No, I didn't. You did. You did. I promise you. Right. It, so basically, what happens is all the wheels came Eyebrows? off. Eyebrows? Uh, well, no, I don't want to bet that. Oh, okay, fine. Um, no, but the one thing everyone always says to me is, oh, well, you joke around, you do stuff, but when you're... When I cross the yeah, whitewash... Yeah, when you're on rugby, you're, you're rugby, rugby yeah. You're rugby hat. So I couldn't... I wouldn't... I just couldn't deal with it. I was like, I'm trying to be no, no, serious. No, no. You were being, being annoying. Like you said, people don't get that about you, do they? No. They think, because you're everywhere... On every single channel, on every single show, yeah. they think that you don't take rugby seriously, well, actually, which is unfair. Well, actually, I bloody because do. he does. He's one of the most professional people I know. Um, oh, well, don't stop there. You well, I didn't gone, want to, what you else to say. What else did you want me to Hard say? Hardworking, dedicated, lovely, responsible, funny. You've said it all for me. There um, you go, James then, Haskell. But then cue this game. I hadn't played in six weeks. Eddie was there. Eddie was there. I hadn't played in six weeks. I came on the field. Eddie! Right, Joe was in one of his silly moods. I'm coming on! <laughs> Eddie, I'm coming on now! Uh, he was in one of his silly moods and uh, he pulled my scrum cap. I was like, right, fucking hell. He's such a Norse. Right? And he was like laughing and pushing. And, like, no, he, so what, yeah, but I pulled your scrum cap off and you'd lost the plot or whatever, but I'd managed to... I know, I've seen it, yeah. So you that's put, what they didn't see. I took his scrum cap and then walked off to the waters and then lobbed it. Lobbed it over there so he'd had to walk past us. And what people, what other people didn't see as well, and he should be getting yeah, a retrospective yellow card for it, is that Danny Care did it before me. As well as after. Squirted him before yeah. me. So then Hask come fucking trotting along like that and I was like, he's fucking livid. I'm gonna... <laughs> He needs to cool down this one. He needs to fucking see. I've got him where I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But do you know what the thing was? Is that Joe, the first carry or something like that, what you don't see is like, Joe, you'll, you'll, you'll get tackled by Joe. He'll, he'll get up because he hits you hard. He'll like tread on your foot, <laughs> hold you down, push you over, and then he'll do it with a smile on his face. He does it in training all the time. Like, he, he, you know, you always know you get, if he's in a silly mood, you, you, you're done. Never done that before. He you know, does it every session. So I then was like, right, I've lost this. And I thought, I don't want to hit Joe, because obviously, A, I get in trouble, B, I, he's a mate. So I'm going to give him the Vulcan death grip. So I just thought that would be just enough, because I can't get in trouble for choking someone out. There's no rule in the book about that part. So angry. And I was so angry. <clears throat> and I then, don't think the hand behind the neck was necessary, mate. No, because I wanted to clamp you in, because yeah, you've got a big it, neck. Yeah, it's still... You've done a lot of legs. It's very aggressive. You've got a lot of neck weight, so I can't really get my hand around it. I've got skew fingers, as we know. So then as I was walking off, he, he squirted the water. Danny Care did me with the water. And I looked at Danny and I thought it would be like hitting a child. I was like, he, I, like, I really like Danny as well. I've known Danny longer than I've known uh, Joe. And I thought to myself, I can't do it. And so everyone's constantly given a shit ever since. As if I'm going to 
as if we weren't mates. So I basically went up to Joe after as I was laughing. Go, you absolutely done me there. I had no, I had no intentions to get you yellow card. No, no, I that thought was, you were yellow card too. Come on, just give him yellow card. As just, if I thought, as it that is bonus. not a yellow card offence. Come on, mate. He strangled me. We've had a bit of a tussle, and you know, but look that's... at Danny in the background. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's coming like, from miles away. <laughs> what the fuck is going well, on there? <laughs> what? Um, you... But did, did did you let yourself down? No. You do it again. Yeah. What should Same we thing? Do or would you do something? Yeah, hundred fucking percent. Or would you do something a bit more meaningful? Oi, up at the, how would no, you, no, 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 you play that? Like 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 fortress stoop. <laughs> the stoop, yeah. A couple of months time. Fine, we'll be there. You, you did quite a lot of whinging to the referee. You can't do that, yeah, referee. Yeah, I know, can't I know. Do it because it's quite in my yeah, face. Because yeah. the point is that all you want as a player is consistency. I'm like, hold on a minute. What, what, he, he's a specialist at it. He's got a black belt in being a pain in the ass. Yeah, but have you ever looked back at that incident and gone and listened to yourself go? Sir, he pulled my scrub cap off <laughs> and he squirted water in my face and you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Have you not gone to yourself? Not what sure I landed many blows. No, no, because what, what... He squirted water yeah, in my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you mean? I haven't chucked a load of fucking... Acid. Yeah, yeah over yeah. here. Yeah, but you know what I want you in real terms, you go, horror, that fucking bloke with the mohawk, the prick's throwing water in my face, he's wound me out, he's made me look like a dickhead, I've strangled him, fucking yellow card him. You can't say that to a referee. So you've got to go, sir... Who's done this and this? And people go, oh, he squirted water. I go, listen, <laughs> this shit prick has fucking thrown water in my face. He's mugged me off. I'll rip his eyes out. Oh, you're but saying, I didn't. You're saying it now. Yeah, fucking yeah. Tough guy. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Big Time. But no, so, but then everyone says you lost it. I was like, I didn't. I didn't throw any punches. You got yellow carded and left the yeah, field. But, yeah, but that, makes it. It, that almost makes it worse. <laughs> I lost the battle. I know what it's like to Wait. lose control, and that was a lot Wait, I lost the battle, control. but not the war, pal. This is quite a hot potato, but I'm going to throw it at you anyway and see whether you juggle it. Samson Lee. Discuss. What would you like me to discuss about him? He's a tight your reflections for Wales and your, Scarlet. Your reflections. Reflections? Yeah. Of the incident that happened in 2016. Uh, we spoke the following year in the um, corresponding fixture. And is he a person who said to you, don't worry about it, it's a storm in a teacup? Or was he irritated by it? Or I don't he... think he used the word storm in a teacup. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, probably not his... It was more, you know... <clears throat> Did he... Sorry, mate, you know, just... So... Just, don't worry about it. He didn't have an issue. He didn't have an issue on the day. Yeah. Um, and he didn't have an issue with it. Or he, didn't want, he didn't want to get... He's quite a private guy. Yeah. Um, in the whole furore that... Very good. That is the first time you use one of them big words in the right sentence. It's not that big. It's only six letters long. Seven. One nil, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That followed. Um, he didn't. He didn't get involved in any of it. He didn't want to get involved in any of the hearing. He wasn't interested. He just wanted it to to go away. Um, what I did was wrong, and I uh, served my two weeks ban and paid my fine. I do think it was blown out of proportion hugely. It's your opinion, James. Well, I'm fine. I say in my opinion because I you was there. You played in the game. I was you there. did play in that game. I added my own little bit of spice into the mix as well. What did you do? Well, I'm not going to self. I'm not going to incriminate myself. I'm not completely mad, Alex. But I, I lead us to say I was there because, because actually sticking up for me, weren't you? Yeah, because actually it's got my back. I, actually, I stuck up for you in the paper. Do you remember I got them phone calls as well? I did remember I came out. Oh, and spoke yeah, with you, you came out and you said that for me. Yeah, didn't you? I did. I just no, I was there, and obviously things were said to Joe, and Joe said things. I just think that it's. I think a lot of it was like pressure. You know, pressure from other people. It's just like, I just think, especially the fine you had to pay, I think was just madness. What was the fine? £20,000. But I just think if you're going to draw... I just think it's a very hard situation. I just remember when I first heard it, I was blown away by it. I just felt that there was so much pressure and excess thing put on to do something that, that maybe people just got a little bit carried away by it. What is your relationship with the media? Because uh, this is quite... If I can... At that time, it yeah. wasn't particularly good. Post-World post -world Cup. Bear in mind, around the World Cup, I'd managed to... Insult that peen ass about his... Um... I'd managed to tell pretty much every member of the media, particularly the paper media, um, to fuck off at some point or other. Charlie Sow was the one who didn't really like oh, me. Oh, yes, what did he do? Well, you? he moaned about fucking... He said some of the rivets in the Penny Hill tent 
media tent were rusty and, and there wasn't any. That's right. I remember But the foie gras and volivine <laughs> were slightly soggy. And I'd seen well, that and then I went and had a look to see how bad it really was because the way he described it, it was really bad. Like th- you made out it was like a third world operation. Yeah, I was like, right, I'm going to go look at this thing. And I looked over and there was all these um, bacon rolls in the corner. I thought, I'm fucking having one of them. Don't turn out. I did have one. That was my, my meal. <laughs> I never would have guessed. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, but there was no ketchup. So I took a picture of the bacon rolls that had been put on for them and said, you're right, Charlie, it is shit house in here. They don't even put ketchup out. And he didn't really enjoy it. I thought, you know, a bit, a bit of... Yeah, but thingy, I think that's... But he that, again, he stuck you in the column for the next three weeks. He did. He? Yeah. He mentioned that he saw me that. in uh, a local coffee shop womping down some chocolate cake. I went, you <laughs> fucking Judas. Yes, lying that, isn't it? Tell it. It, it, it was it's fucking carrot cake, friends. you twat. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Wait, it was lion. a salad. Um, I, I hate stuff, stuff like that. That's what pisses me off about... You were going to say something. You went, oh, well, I might add. I just can't... I was going to... So, to the classic path that's been walked by many sportsmen before is that for of poacher turned gamekeeper and i <laughs> like now that i'm a I, but i can know. remember interviewing you and and, and uh, just sort of getting a sense you really didn't like media full stop although i didn't have, trust the media no i can see that but now that you've sort of retired from international sport what are you doing well no but i'm interested now because you what you were saying about the, the path of questioning was you didn't like the media but but you're doing loads more stuff now. Yeah, and I think and, you are and available also, for selection for anybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but also no, no, but also, I've always thought you had a very funny personality. When you applied yourself and were interested, lovely pair and of people always go, Joe Marler's so funny, blah blah blah. Such pleasant words. You you now you're now doing more, and I think it's good. Because it'd be a Again, waste if you didn't. You're quite you good experience at it. things, don't you? You go through experiences. Yeah. You know? Yep, lad, bits. Yeah. Bits. You've experienced absolutely oh. nothing. You know Joe's best best story is, right, best shagging story. Met a bird, right, settled down, got married. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about that is know. your face, you're going, yeah, what yeah. the? That's I it. Went, well, there are no shaggy That's what I mean. So that's, what that is, is very good. Here? That's his one and only story. That, Honestly, it's real short lived. I think that's really nice. Yeah, it's brilliant. What? But it's just a lovely love, it's love like story. Same, oh, it's the same story with me and Chloe. Producer Simon. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nah. we can fucking hear you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, true love, as always, wins out on the House of Rugby. And speaking of love, it was interesting to dig into how much players love the game or whether they simply see it as a job. It's a job. Were, cut, you, asking cut me, for, uh, were you asking me? Yes. Oh. Cut yeah, me the percentages job. between job and passion. It's a job. 100% a job. Yeah, it's my job. Okay. I'm not passionate about it. I'm passionate about like winning. I'm passionate about being competitive. Yeah, but I wouldn't say I'm like passionate about rugby. Really? A little bit. Uh, do you want me to say mm. something else? Well, that's exactly the same ask. Okay. Do you, For you. I sound been... like I've said something really <laughs> wrong. Do you want me to say something else? No, no. You can say whatever you like. I guess it's a rugby show. Shall I? Sh- oh, no, 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 no. I'm genuinely disappointed. It now, is, aren't they? They? but it just shows that it. Is, no, it so it, for it, every player, is it a purely a job? No, I, I'm not. You, I didn't. You, you said you asked no, me. No, I'm not broadening the question. Oh. Subject matter. Well, I'll broaden my answer by saying I don't fucking know. Go ask them <laughs> lot. Um, it's not. Was it always no, just a not. job for you? No, it's not. It is a job for some people. It, sometimes it feels it's like a job. It's a job you love. You know, sometimes it feels like a job and you hate it. But then a lot of the time when you're hanging out with 30 of your best mates, it's, it's a job that you really enjoy. But it is a job. Um, it is. What well, time are you in? Nine till four? Uh, is that your day? Nine till four? No, five. You get My up day at... is five till five. You get up at 5 a.m.? Yeah. How well, many days a week? Because I live in the arse end of nowhere. Yes, that's the day Hask said last time you were always in their truck. Yeah. You get up at 5 a.m.? How many days a week do you get up at 5 a.m.? Five. Four. Four. Four days. Jesus. And what time do you have to be in the club? Seven. Seven thirty. See, I was being... Yeah, that I can see as a oh, job. Oh, mate, so. it's a job. It's a job. But that doesn't mean just because I'm not passionate about <coughs> do you get it. Tired? doesn't mean I don't love it. I love doing it. But yeah. Do I get tired? What yeah. time do you get to bed? Um, depends what's on. Game of Thrones last night, wasn't it? Are you into that? Fucking into it, mate. It's Are you? So good. So, so good. that's so. way past your bed. I'm not sure whether I was happy about 
Harry are getting nailed or not. Oh, sorry, spoiler alert if anyone hasn't oh, watched it. Yeah, it's still a bit weird because according to the book... I, I was trying to figure out how old she was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But she's not, so... Yeah. Yeah, a bit weird. Well, some parts of the job are always more fun than others. Just ask Hask and Marla, particularly when it comes to Chris Robshaw. Years ago, Chris Robshaw, when he got his very first cap in Argentina, we told him that if he went up on stage and sung a song, we'd all join him up there for his first cap. So he got oh. up there and he went, he went, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to call out the rest of the England team. You I don't need to put a voice on. Oh. You're the same Oh, fine, okay. Poshness. Mm. Mm. Not really, mate. Not Robbo's really. like... Where'd quite... you go to school? I uh, went to Wellington. Yeah, where did Robbo go to school? Millfield. OK, slightly different. Yeah, Still but Robbo 50 does grand sound... a year. Carry on. Yeah, but Robbo does sound more posh than I am. No. He's moving in a higher circle. I mean, to you... Oh, everything... yeah, he moves in a higher I circle. Said, yeah, Chris yeah, would not yeah. appear... You try and ITV's sound as yeah, Chris is more, on a much more high-end pro- like high end. High end version yeah. of me. 47th best man, best dressed man. GQ, yeah. smells good. Yeah, it looks good. I smell good. Um, anyway, so so basically, so, okay, here we go. Perfect four. I, I smell good. <laughs> yeah. Um, is so, he anyway, so Robert was sex so, panther. So Robert get Robert gets up and goes, right lads, we've got to, we're going to sing "Build Me Up Buttercup." So it's "Build he Me Up Buttercup, Baby, Will You Let Me Down?" And nobody came up, right? <laughs> and the brass band started joining in, <laughs> and there's all these dignitaries and opportunities. He was like, "Why do you build me up, build me up?" Right? What? We all mugged him off. <laughs> Robbo waited until we'd lost a fucking grand <laughs> slam game. I got five minutes off the bench, my 50th cap. Everybody is in fucking hell. Daggers, right? And then Robbo gets up on stage and goes, right, lads, very special day. Uh, James Hassel's made his 50th and he'd like to come up and sing. And I, and, I got, and I literally looked at him and I was like, are you fucking serious, Robbo? And he went, no, he come waited up. that long. He waited that bed. long, right? Calculated. Be, oh yeah, best, a dish best served cold. Got up and I looked around and there was literally like, uh, Lancaster was like laser eyeing me. Everyone was like that. Everyone was on suicide watch. And I just started singing, you never close your eyes. Right. We got back to the stage. Yeah, no, yeah. Back and, to the yeah, and I turned around. Did and you give it the... I, no, I, went, I, went, I went, don't worry, I've got this. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. And I started serenading these big bits of kit from like the... the, the <laughs> big bits of kit from yeah, like some... Nice. Some, 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 uh, uh, yeah, R, some RFU, RFU yeah, or WRU, yeah. or whatever. Uh, getting really into it, right? And... All the Welsh boys started singing and dancing along. All the English boys were like sort of joining in. The rest of the lads were like, ah, what are you doing? I went for the full thing, serenade, everyone giving baby. it the full body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But baby, you know it. What? You've lost <laughs> that love and feel it. Honestly, I, mean, and I, I literally brought the house down, but pff, that was it. It was Sorry, game over, what, wasn't it? That last bit you said. Brought the house down? Yeah. Um, what about. You know I did. No, you know I did. 2012, South Africa. Were you on that tour? Yeah, of course I was. Well, sorry for not realising it was my first tour and you don't really talk to people as... You know, what I do. Yeah. What anyway, did you sing on the bus? similar to um, when we'd got up and done our songs, which I was more nervous about... Than playing. Than actually playing. What I did you say? shitting myself to the, uh, Adele, someone like you. Oh. Smashed it. i never forget my first song on no, the bus. No, hang on, it's not your story, oh. you've just said one. All right, we Fucking have this give problem. Else. What about then on the same bus journey? I was sat next to Johnny May, and I, Johnny, like, you know, we've got a bit of a long trip. It'd be really good for morale if you got up and did Ice Ice Baby because he knows it word for word. I was like, be great for morale. He's like, yeah, but I haven't got a cap, Joe. I haven't been capped. Like, I was like, they won't care, mate. You fucking get up there. You, it's entertaining the crowd. You know it word for word. He was like, oh, I'm not sure, Joe. I'm not sure. And I was like, fucking do it, mate. It'd be brilliant. Boys will love you. It's a great way. You came on tour late. A great way to think. He was like, yeah, you're right. I'm going I'm to do it. I'm going to do it. Gets up. Everyone's a bit, goes a bit quiet. Like, what the fuck is this doing? What's he doing? And he starts going. Dun, 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 And I'm there. I'm like, fucking hell, I've made him do it. I've actually fucking made it. I, I sit down! <laughs> fucking sit down! All I'm hearing from the back, Toby Flood, you lot. Yeah. Where's your fucking cat? <laughs> sit down! You're not welcome here! Sit down now, you fucking Brit! And he, I was like, Johnny, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> sit through. Sit back down, he finished it, and all, all the abuse he got, and he was sat there like this, he was like, oh, you said it would be good, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, sorry, mate, I didn't see that happening. <laughs> you had quite a good relationship with Johnny, though, didn't you? 
two yeah, P. Yeah, we did. Two yeah, P's we got rid of his pod. We, um... Did you run with him? We came through age groups together. You stole his shoe and gave him foot problems, didn't you? <laughs> you, 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 stole, you, you, stole, you stole you stole his insert to his shoe and gave him a foot problem, didn't you? You fucking Judas. You did, didn't you? Yeah, I was responsible for stealing his trainer, one of his trainers. Orthotics. On, uh, orthotics. Um, <laughs> he blames me for having fasciitis or something. Yeah, he did. He got, he got, was it, yeah, he's something, uh, yeah, what is some fasciitis thing with the bottom of the foot he got? Yeah, but only because he didn't go and get a new orthotic for like four months. So it's your own fault. We'll laugh a minute with those two. And speaking of laughs, it is Guinness Perfect Pour Time, our weekly test in 119 and a half seconds, because that is how long it takes to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. We will see you next week with Rugby Royalty. Not Mr Mike Tyndall this time, but instead a man of the royal family of the 15-man game, Mr Michael Liner, who brings along his son, Louis, a man destined for rugby stardom as well. Here, however, is the perfect pour with Joe and Hask. They had one job, just one job, and that was to pick a 15-man team of Hollywood actors. You said it was 15. Well, it was, but you said you've only picked eight of the 15. When did I say that? At the start of the show. Was one that on air? One and a half pints ago. Was that... Yeah. Okay, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got a 15, give us a 15. Well, I've, I've well ask. I'm just trying to give James enough time to be able to... <coughs> right, here we go. <clears throat> What's the theme? Hollywood, act- Hollywood actors 15. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't hear you say that, so I needed the audience. I was speaking on their behalf. Okay. Michael, number one. Yes. Loose head prop. Michael Clark Duncan. I've no idea who that is. Yeah. The prison drama with Tom Hanks, which is what? Green Mile? Yes. Oh. Ginormous. You know, the bloke. Yes. You know. That's a very he's good start. He's dead, John, isn't he? What? what? Oh, yeah, he, he did. did. He did die. Fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Joe, again, we're trying to keep this... Sorry, 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 family sorry show. mate. Welcome to our younger viewers. Love to have you with us. Yeah, he's thanks. dead. Yeah. yeah well, we can't play... This is, yeah, but this isn't a real Dead team. or alive. Yeah, dead or alive. Right. We're not going to select them. We're okay, not, it's not an actual talk. So, John Coffey at one. Yes. Two, I've got two options. No, you can only pick one. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to help. Danny DeVito. Small. Or Mel Gibson from Braveheart. More of a Scott Brits type hooker. Who? Mel Gibson from Braveheart. No, no, but I, I'm talking for his arrows because in Braveheart he lobs that stone at Hamish's head. Yes, he does. So it's like, fuck, he's good at throwing. Number three, John Candy. Also dead. Also oh, dead. fucking hell. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Rest in Sadly. peace, John. Uh, he was the cool runnings coach. Or Adam Fogarty. Do you know him? No. No. Gorgeous George. Oh, yeah. You know, fucking... Oh, yeah. Gorgeous from, George. From... Um, fucking... But, Lockstock. But he was going to be an option, but then I realised... He's dead He's well. got... Is I he actually... I, I don't actually know. No, he's got a glass jaw, so he's not actually going to make the cut. True. Uh, it seems like you two aren't actually bothered <laughs> by Harley. <laughs> no, no, I've been I've doing my fucking time. Doing his home you work asked me to do I'm one doing thing. I've, got my I've spent a lot of fucking time doing this, and it's hard. Keep going. Half the team's subject. dead. Half the team's dead. You said it doesn't matter. We're not you're selecting right, him right, in your right. posh, posh voice. Number four, James Cromwell. From he's six foot seven. Yeah. Oh, f- you're the lead in this. You're meant to know, know your I, shit. I, yeah, I do. James Cromwell. He's the father from, from Babe. Believe it or not, would you think he was six foot seven? No. No. But I'm also not sure I'd stick him in my 15. Well, it's not your fucking 15. A 15. He's 79 years old. Irrelevant. Five. I'm having Richard Keel. Kiel. Jaws? Nailed it. Lovely. Seven foot two. We've got a great line out option here. Yeah, dead. Sadly. Uh, No. Yeah. (laughs) You've killed everybody. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Number six, Mark Wahlberg. Good. I like that. From... But when he was in, um, Mark, um, uh, you know, Boogie that. Nights. No, no. When he was in um, that one about the gym with the Rock. Oh, I didn't like that movie. No, no. But when he was in it. Oh yeah, fine. About, oh, fuck off. <laughs> uh, seven. Dolph Lundgren. Grin. Very big for Lundgren. seven. I'm looking at a sort of Peter Stafford toy type character. I'm looking for a big pack here. Okay, good. Yeah, like that. Um, he was Ivan Drago. Yes, I'm, I know that. Yeah. Oh right. So you know him, but you don't know the farmer from Babe. Fun. Yeah, yeah brilliant. that is, yeah, fun. yeah, get fucked. Number eight, The Rock. He's 61, is it? Okay, good, yep, yeah. fine. Do you want me to do my nine to 14? Yes, Because I haven't got a 15, I've got a coach. Uh, number nine, I've got three options Peter Dinklage. Oh, Game of Thrones. Correct, yeah. we're sticking with the stereotypes of rugby here, you know, yeah. big fat man in the pack. That's very Number nine, tiny. Or Joe Pesci. Pesky. Love that. Pesci good. would be great, Pesci, great good. work. You know, yeah, gobbing yeah. off, he's actually nailed. That's very good, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? 
That was. A, is he in here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is he in here? What? Should, come out, Joe. Come out. Funny, oh, funny I, how. I do, I do do good. I do do a good. Um, uh, funny. <laughs> I do, is he here, Joe? Oh, oh, Joe, you, will oh, you come out, please? Oh, you know how good my Mandela is. Number ten, Patrick Stewart. Why? Because as Professor X, although he's in a chair, he can control things with his mind. So he's controlling the game. Mm. And also when he was in extras, he could control when uh, clothes fell off of people. So he's got <laughs> mind. <That's> the best. <laughs> he's the best character. I've got, this, I've got this moment, you know, I've got this <laughs> script actually I'm writing. Well, what, what's it about? Uh, well, actually, you know, I, I see this lady walking down the street and then, boom, her clothes fall off. Very good. Anyway. It's genius. 11. Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Buscemi? Small. Buscemi, yeah. Buscemi, yeah. yeah. Uh, mainly because I likened my 11 to Johnny May, and he's as close a Hollywood yeah. actor as you're going to get. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Crazy. Are you going to fucking can you dial join in? in? Yeah, I, I, I've just keep. finished my team. I've finished my team. Sorry. Right. I thought we were going to bounce off each other. Yeah, we're trying oh, to. I'm really sorry. I'm I can only apologise. Number sorry. 12, I'm having Vinnie Jones in. Strong, direct, just ball carrier, gain line. Don't care about ability, just want someone Hard. to bang someone. Hard, okay. 13, Jason Statham, but only when he was in Crank, because he's got that heart thing where he's... I think Transporter would be quite good. What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> Even when he's in Transporter, the movie... When he's like a hitman slash like getaway driver, has he got a fast heart and makes him go really quick? Yeah, he's very good at it. yeah high de high high decisions very fast. Either of them, then uh, fourteen Tom Hanks, but only when he was in Forrest Gump because he can run loads. You've legit. This is probably the best preparation. Yeah, fifteen blank. I haven't got a fucking clue. I actually did put Chris Hemsworth when he played Thor because he's got safe hands because he always has to catch the hammer back. So yeah. I go like that, and what happens next? Comes back to you. Yeah, you go. Boom. He's he's. I, I mean, coach. I'm, oh, Robin Williams. Oh, from Goodwill Hunting. One of my favourite men. Yeah, he's ever. dead as well. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello. Good morning, Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. Brilliant. Just say the title. I'll go with first. Uh, John Goodman. Don't rush it. No, you are. Can I just? I'm really disappointed. Oh, in listen, him. Joe's done so much preparation. That's the most professional preparation we've ever had for this. I thought yes. he did really well. He, he knew everything. He doesn't Oi. get out a lot. Oi. He's been in the car for Oi. four hours. Oi. Going Oi. back. To well, you've had two hours done. Bits. <laughs> he does bits. <laughs> Your anti bits. You're Go, doing zero quickly. bits. Make um, it good. Okay, John Goodman uh, from Roseanne. Massive fat bloke. Yeah, I know he is. Yeah, yeah. no, Coyote Ugly. Yeah, yeah, Coyote Ugly. Lot of scrum depth on that. Right, Dudley Moore. Right, uh, financing to help the team, small, you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> knows how to get there from... from. Um, no, I know who Dudley Moore is. What don't film? listen, if you don't sort your from attitude Bond. out, I'll address Joe. He's the not, Bond. No, not Dudley, no, no, Dudley Moore's um, from Arthur. He's a... Uh, no, he's like a... Uh, no, that's, that's uh, Roger, Roger Moore. Moore. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a, you're a simpleton. Um, <laughs> Kevin James, uh, Paul Blart, Mall Cop. He's a big oh, fat yeah, comedian. Strong. Yeah, 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 strong. Yeah, good. Uh, second row, Clint quite Eastwood. fat. Clint Very Eastwood. Good, yes. Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, how tall right, is he? Sort of a Martin Johnson-esque type character. Harrison Ford. Yes. Um, you know, Fugitive Star. Days, yes. like powerful. Your sure. fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Go get him. <laughs> I want every in-house, out-house, dog-house search from here in a four-mile radius. You um, a big Harrison Ford fan? Yeah. yeah. No, I just like that. Well, he's a massive That's Bath good. fan, and turns out he's a massive Harrison Ford fan. Um, Collecting them. Robert Downey <coughs> Jr. Sorry, uh, Robert Downey Jr. at se uh, seven. Why? Okay. Uh, I and Iron Man, just great over the ball, very fast, powerful, aggressive. Don't remember him being over the ball <laughs> in Iron Man. Well, but... you probably watched the you didn't watch the, the director's cut version. Oh. You probably got one of them pirate DVDs, didn't you? One of your mates sold it to you Brilliant. down the market. Yeah. Um, Matt Damon. From Matt uh, Damon. From um, fucking Matt Damon. America. Uh, fuck America. What's no, it called? No, no, America. Fuck, team fuck America. Fuck Matt fuck Damon. Yeah. yeah, Team America. Yeah. Team America but but yeah. Matt Damon's from um, Victus. No, the, the <laughs> movies where he killed one identity. Yes, oh, born yeah, identity. Good. Right, The Rock at number eight. Yeah, nicked it, but that's fine. Right, Al Pacino at nine. Yeah. Right, mm. Robert De Niro at 10, pulling the strings. Nine and 10 combination. Everyone loves them. That's loved true. them in the movie Heat. Very Great good. Great decision making from both of them. And right. Godfathers. Liam Neeson, uh, Crash uh, Ball 12. You are digging trenches. Right. 
Um, number 13, shit. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Why? Yeah, that's good. Uh, powerful, great, great crash ball. Uh, <laughs> Showman, greatest Great showman. showman, like that. Yeah, performance. Um, da, da, oh, da, da, number eleven, Ryan da, da. Reynolds from Deadpool. No, no, let him go on. Keep Ryan going. Reynolds, uh, good speed. Um, <laughs> Will Smith, fourteen. Why? Strong. Because he's fast. Fresh Prince. How do you know he's fast? Because he was fast with the ladies in Fresh Prince. I thought that's why he was always, you know, operating, doing deals. Okay. So he's fast on it. Hey, hey. Doing bits. Doing bits. Kevin Spacey at 15 because no one ever got oh, past him. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. It's always your 15. It's always your 15. Russell Crowe on my loose head. Awful. Awful. Why? Well, you've got to explain your like reasons. Like a French Papa on board. <laughs> ah, John, Belu hey. Beer. John Belushi at two. Lovely. Good, yeah. Belushi. Animal House. Dirty, reckless, kind of guy you need on a team. Arnold Schwarzenegger at three. Like a sort of strong oh, I forgot Arnie. three. How did we forget Arnie? Well, I did originally have him as my 12, but I fucked him off. No, he's not quick enough for 12. He's definitely a strong Sheridan type three. Dolph Lundgren in Sheridan the second played row. one. Yeah, he could play both sides. No, he couldn't. Dolph Lundgren at four. Bionic. One or two problems with the drug testers, but still worth picking. Mm. Give him a second chance. Who hasn't? With John Wayne at five. Oh. oh. He's dead. Yeah, he is, but he was fucking hard in his time. Who's dead? Only because he had a gun. His line, my column is Matt Damon at six. Matt Damon! Matt Damon knows the role from Invictus. And he also played rugby in which other film? That Bollywood one, where they all jump on each other oh. and crack their nuts. Please, no. could no. some of our viewers no. please watch that Bollywood movie about rugby? <laughs> 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 That's what you see every week in the Premiership. <laughs> he played it in The Departed. He played a rugby player yeah, in The Departed. Did. Eyebrows. What? Well, if you get it wrong, you shave your eyebrow off. Okay. Are you, no, are you putting your eyebrows on it? Just say eyebrow. Be <laughs> careful. Yeah, I will. No, I won't. He'll have no Steven idea. Seagal. Steven Seagal at seven. Oh, how do we forget Steven how Seagal? Good that? How good would he be at the Mate, breakdown? He'd be unbelievable. The Chop Rock him. at eight, who gets the hat trick. So he is. We'd like to hear from him next week. If the Rock we had is Annika Rice, we didn't have Scarlett Johansson. He likes we'd, his rugby, The Rock. We'd like the Rock hey, to join us. Hey, I'm here in the Iron Paradise, man. And I just want to tell you, go get it. Fucking legend. I've gone Tom Cruise at nine. Hustle, bustle. Yeah, great. Steve McQueen at ten. Oh, lovely. King of Cool. Don't know who that is. Yes, you do. You the Great Escape the and Bullet. Bullet. Two films I haven't seen. Still don't know who You haven't is. seen The Great Escape? No. Go home and watch it now. No. Uh, watch it on, uh, on the way home in your, car, your long journey. I've got a centre combination of Bradley Cooper as like a second distributor, which I quite like, mm. with Leonardo DiCaprio at 13. Yeah, I can see that. And I've got a back three of Zac Efron who's my sort of Nolsey type bit character. small, yeah. Yeah, but like, no, powerful, compact. Okay. There's with, nothing, mate. With Jamie Foxx on my right wing. Have you seen... And Brad Pitt at 15. Have you seen Zac Efron in High School Musical? No. In High School Musical, you get to know him as an actual... You get through to him, you get to know him as a bloke, and he's weak, mentally and physically. But he'd be quite French. I'd quite like him as a sort of... And he likes of a bit of the old... So whether he turned up... Was... He likes eating food. I think my team wins. What was he, 15? Uh, Brad Pitt, really composed, very confident at the bat, hits lovely lines, siege gun boot, covers everything that comes through. And also, if people make a break, he's so good looking that they just throw the ball on the floor. Ah, oh, do you like that? Yeah. Just being told by Sai to finish it there. Yeah, go on, mate. Thoughts on this week's show? Um, we've talked about absolutely no rugby. I, I do not envy the editor. No. We've also together. done two hours for a one-hour show. Uh, Have we? Yeah, I think so. I have, I've really moment. enjoyed it. Thank you for coming on. Mark's out of 10? For the show. For the show, for I've your performance. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, Will you come I back? I enjoy your company. I enjoy your company. Uh, I think we should go out. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I don't, think, hey, hey, I don't hey, think we should. Hey, let's do some bits. No, absolutely not. I've got to get home. It's later than that. You, you, cause the problem is all that stop, start, fast, go thing you do. It's taking us two hours. I know. I need lighter. You just answer the question first yeah, time round. I've, like, I've got it now. Let's Energy. go. Let's go, lads. Other bits to tell you about. We're a YouTube show and a podcast. Don't forget to download. Please do leave us a review. Uh, also check into TK with Carl Frampton. Boys Don't Cry is back. You going to have a little go on that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. They do. Uh, that's with Russell Kane. They do. Real Men Cry. We've also got a House of Rugby Facebook group as well. Are you on Facebook? Yes. James Haskell. Brilliant. J -H -H Original, that. Yeah, find it. I've got Please a join in the conversation James there Haskell, if you fitness. are so inclined. Thank you, James Haskell. Thank you, Joe Meyer. I think this week we've added Curious to our list mm. of emotions and 
podcast journeys. I bet we get loads of messages about why we didn't talk about rugby in the England Wales game. We Just did. England by fifteen. James. Yeah, what he said. Okay. Genuine. Yeah. Be your own man. Do you I mean am. That? I'm the same. That's what I thought before coming on the show. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Goodbye for now. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.